Ohio's Chamber of Commerce actually killed an anti-pollution bill of rights. I mean, this, this is a very, very consequential story. And, uh, you know, I, I, want, I want to dig into this and, and, uh, and figure out what happened and how and why. On the line with us is Marky Miller. Uh, Marky is an organizer with Toledoans for Safe Water. LakeErieAction.org is the website. And, of course, the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, CELDF, uh, C-E-L-D-F dot org. Uh, the Twitter handle is Toledoans for SW, as in Safe Water. Marky, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Thanks for joining us. Um, can, you, can you tell us what the Lake Erie Bill of Rights is and how it came about? Yeah, so the Lake Erie Bill of Rights is a charter amendment that people in my community in Toledo, Ohio, wrote, put together, petition. They, we collected 10,500 signatures for it to say that Lake Erie has a right to exist and flourish and thrive um, and that was in response to a 2014 water crisis where we didn't have water for three days. We could not touch it. We could not bathe, could not drink, don't boil it. Um, that happened very suddenly because of a, a toxic algal bloom in the Western Basin. And for the year that followed, there was no action from our government. There was very little, you know, tangible actions that we saw coming out of any laws and the people in my community got fed up with that. So we wanted to put a law together that we could start to protect ourselves, our community, and this ecosystem that sustains us. Wow. So uh, what's the story of how the Chamber of Commerce killed this? Right. Well, we fought really hard to get on the ballot. We ended up having a, a special election in February of this year. And the Lake Erie Bill of Rights passed with 61% of the vote. Mm -hmm. um, it was immediately challenged by uh, a corporate agriculture, you know, a big ag operation. And, this is challenged in court, uh, I assume. Yes, in, in yeah. federal court. Um, and so that that's ongoing. We knew that we had um, oil and gas campaigning against us when we were getting to the ballot. And then we got word that the Ohio budget bill was, it, 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 excuse me, the Ohio Budget Bill included provisions that revoked legal standing for nature and had direct language in there um, withdrawing rights of nature and removing that as an option across the state. Mm. Um, this was kind of a, a sudden discovery because when we found out about it, we had a, a reporter kind of bring it to our attention. We tried to find it online and it was not even in the available public budget bill so we had no idea where it came from uh didn't know when it when it got put in there there were no testimonies about it um and we ended up doing a public records request to find out which representative had even introduced th this language nobody was owning up to it nobody wanted to to take ownership of that and we got back a series of emails that were sent to Representative uh, James Hoops uh, from the Ohio Chamber of Commerce saying, hey, here, here's the language that we want put in. We know it's past the deadline, but we'd really appreciate if we could work with you on, on, getting, this, on getting this passed and saying that it was essential to what they wanted to accomplish and citing the Lake Erie Bill of Rights. That's that's pretty breathtaking. Has this become a partisan issue? Um, I don't I don't think so. I, I think I mean, it's this this, this really state representative is a Republican, right? Correct, correct. But I don't think it's one party over the other that is either supportive or it's just corporate corruption. Not. Good old fashioned corporate right. corruption. This, yeah. This is the corporate state. You know, this this yeah. is what we're talking about, that when we say we want to start passing local laws that protect us and protect our environment, well, now we have to be obedient to, to these higher laws written by the state. And it comes down to, well, who's actually writing those? Because it doesn't seem to be the elected officials. It doesn't seem to be the people. Now it's corporate interests writing the laws and handing them to our elected. Is there anything that can be done at this point? I mean, we're not going to 
stop what we're doing. I think obviously we're getting a reaction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're we're causing some some agitation, and this is what you see in in movements throughout history that you can't back down, and you need to keep pushing to say we want to expand rights. We want to protect the rights of our communities, the rights of people, the rights of nature. Um, you know, and and keep pushing. We need more communities in other states to start pushing for more of these local initiatives and rights of nature initiatives. So I, I'm not sure what can be done about the exact budget bill. Um, I know putting that in the budget bill, my understanding is a violation of that being a, a single issue law. It doesn't, I don't think it really has a place mm-hmm. in that budget bill. Um, but again, it comes down to what resources do the people have to take on those challenges so for me on the ground it's going to be about continuing those confrontations so that our culture can start informing the laws that we want to see enforced 